my friends, I'm Christina Singh. And I'm Bobby James. And we are Destinique. Welcome to our music inspiration series, Future Live Musicians. We always visualize having the best show ever, but we also anticipate all the potential hazards so we can meet them head on in rehearsal before the show. In this episode, we'll give you some tips and tricks on how to use technology to make your show as tight as it can be. You're gonna learn how to meet pitch and timing issues, how to record your rehearsals, why you should use a digital mixer, and even some tips on stamina and stage presence. Future live musicians, let's go. From, From studio, studio to, to stage. stage. The singer's main job is to stay in tune and to deliver the melody and the emotion of the song. I'm gonna teach you a tip right now to always start your song in tune. Sometimes if you're coming out of an announcer or another band set that's in a completely different genre and key than your first song, it can be hard to find the root note of your first song. So I always get a little bit of a cue if uh, you don't have an instrumentalist on stage. Get a loop, that the DJ to play like a little bit of a loop. I have Bobby here, he's gonna play something off the SBDSX in one ear I'm gonna be listening to the key, getting situated in where I'm going. On the other hand, I'm gonna be just saying hello to the audience and acting all casual. I'll even plan in advance with Bobby what I'm gonna say right before I want the song to drop so that I don't even have to cue him. So let's try a little bit of When You Love Somebody with a cue. This is a song that starts on a pickup out of nowhere, so it would be impossible almost for me to know what note I start on, but because I have a cue, it's gonna sound super tight. So this is the sample. So I'm just gonna work a beat into it so that there's not uh, any dead air. So it might go something like this. I'll say hello to everybody, welcome down to the show. And I'll plan with Bobby what, what I'm gonna say right before I want him to start the song, something like this. And this is our new song, When You Love Somebody. When you love somebody more than yourself, you're invincible and ready to be brave. When you love somebody more than yourself, it's so beautiful, you give it all away. Running out, caving in, when I get that feeling I can hardly believe, I shut it down. So it sounds super tight, everyone comes in, in tune. Another quick tip on song order, I always hesitate to put two songs consecutively in the set that are only a semitone apart because it can get really hard for your ear to adjust to that new key. It also gets really hard to mix in and out of songs in like a DJ set, like we play dance music. It can get really sour trying to mix songs that are semitone apart. We always try to uh, use a circle of fifths, go up a fourth or down a fifth, or if you want a major energy lift, go up a second, or just go left field somewhere super Super far away, but a semitone up or down is just, I have made mistakes before doing that and I always tend to just start a little flat or sharp. If you really need to do it, give yourself a little segue, like a little interlude where the band is playing in that new key and give yourself some time to situate yourself like we just showed you. Talk to the audience, but we'll have one ear listening to where you're going. A little tip on nailing rhythm in your band. Sometimes there's breaks where the singer's supposed to sing and it's super washy, there's no drums, lots of the synths are affected. It can be really hard to find your downbeat. How we like to have a guide through these muddy waters is to add a click in our in-ear monitors. It's like having a cheat sheet in your head that no one else can hear and it just helps everybody stay tight, especially if you're having a really bad night where you have bad monitoring, at least you have the timing in your ears. For the sake of this lesson, we're going to send what we hear in our ears out to the front of the house so you guys can hear the click. This is really handy for like big band shots that come out of nowhere. It just makes the band look and sound super tight. This is what it sounds like without the track. Simple, sounds like a piano metronome or something. Yeah, any, any tempo you want, you, yeah. any song you want. Some, I, sometimes I won't get it all the way through, I'll just get it like two bars before I know I'm supposed to start singing. It, it's a little guide. And this is what it sounds like uh, track-wise. Hey, yeah. hey, 
In a future episode, we are going to show you how to stripe the clicks in Ableton. That's just a quick guide to staying in time in your set. Always record your rehearsals. You can set up really inexpensive ways to do this. You can record just the audio. Hey, look, audio recordings don't lie. If the singer's singing out of tune, if someone's lagging in time, if the tracks aren't mastered all correctly and something's peaking or there's a, a really quiet spot in the set, you can hear it back and you can also time the length of your sets. Recordings are also a really effective way to objectively give criticism to your bandmates or yourself. You don't have to tell somebody, they can just hear that they're out, then they're out and you don't have to fight about it. <laughs> it takes a lot of guessing out of the equation. Also try to set up a phone to capture physically what you guys are doing on stage. Is the bass player shoegazing and not giving us as much energy as everybody else? And you're doing this with their arm during the verse. It's easy to objectively point things out because recordings don't lie. All right, so another really great way to keep yourself moving forward and making your sets better is to record them. And you can do that right in Ableton Live, and you can insert an audio track. Here's what we do. Uh, we'll just do this real quick. I color it red so I know. Uh, rename, record. We're just gonna choose the stereo output right there. That is what is gonna go to the speakers and that is coming out of our stereo mix of our Midas. You will not hear the click because I have that routed to channel six. So that is only for the performers. Let's see how this works. There's our tracks coming out. So now what you wanna do is you wanna enable this. And what I do is I will put this on auto, I will mute this, and I'll hit the record button. But what I like to do is now you can see that meter being active. That's my vocal coming in through the minus. That's right there, check, check, one, two. And then our tracks are gonna come up on left and right right here. So check this out. What I also like to do is I like to use a key map and I will hit the mute button and use R and I'll hit the record button and use R. So quickly, I can switch between recording my listen uh check check one two there is a vocal and that's really dry that's not going to fit in the mix but what we do is my vocal check 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 okay we got a bit of reverb there that's not really what we would do live but i'm just showing you that you can print a quick mix and you can listen back to it and you can make adjustments you can turn down the loops you can have other things that are coming into this mixer such as the drums and you can blend your mix here we need more piano, uh, we need a little bit more V-drums, and Bobby, your mic is way too loud with way too much reverb. And you can even, I mean, with the Midas Mixer, this is so cool because you can actually use all sorts of effects. There's great outboard gear uh, right here. We use this stereo combinator. This is uh, used as a multiband compression and a bit of a limiter. Uh, we got some stuff on the vocals here, and I like to use this. Uh, it's a sort of 1176 compressor that Midas resembles, and that is my drums. So to keep this set up nice and smooth while you're playing, you're gonna wanna remove all the stop buttons except for your top recording clip. And then when you launch your scenes, it's not gonna cancel the recording so that you can do all your mix moves and everything in Ableton while you're performing. And that top clip will remain recording. So let's try this. That's me in the vocal with too much reverb. And this is the tracks. And this will keep recording. As you can see, the tracks have started. And now I'm speaking. Check, check, one, two, come on. Shine, shine, let it shine. And this will record all the mix moves that you do. You can have drums, everything like I was saying. And let's just have enough of that. Now, when you wanna play that back, what you do is you just use your key map that you made, hit solo, and you can listen back. Record, and then when I go here, it's not gonna stop when I, this is the tracks. And this will keep recording, and this will record all the mix moves that you do. You can have drums, everything like I was saying. That's a really great way to listen back to your rehearsals. It's all in the same program. It's recording right back to, you can even see when it's recording. I like to print this as we are playing and I have a great set that I've printed from our live show, which has the energy of the people and the performance and all that stuff. And yeah, there you go. That's a really great way. And then you would just uh, take this clip, put that in arrangement view, whatever deck B, let's do that. And then hit this, uh, hit active, there you go. Wrap your loop markers around it. 
and hit export, export audio. That'll wrap that. And there you have it. Boom. You can export your set quickly, post it online, listen back to it, see if you got to do some work, make the drums a little bit softer, louder, quieter, make the vocals a little brighter, whatever you need to do. There's your uh, record. There you and go. And when I go here, it's not going to stop the tracks. And this will keep recording. There you have it. Super easy way to record your rehearsals. I've repurposed an old iPhone, iPhone 5S, and we're using a recorder app called Recorder Plus. This allows us to hook up our TRRS jack right here to an eighth inch mini stereo to RCA cable. And for this purpose, I'll be using a small mixer. We can use the RCA on that, or these ends could be adapted to quarter inch XLR from a bigger style mixer like this. All you need to do is before you start the app, plug in the jack to the headphone out or headphone in, I guess, whatever it is, and then start the app. It'll register the cable. You can hit record once the software starts up. And look at that, we already got a feed. You wanna turn down the input gain so that you're not clipping. So this is all the way up. I'm turning that down so that we're not getting too loud of a signal. Check, check, one, two. And you wanna record it fairly quiet. So in post, you can bring it up or, and you're not clipping and distorting the signal during the recording. So possibly the greatest investment that we've made besides our instruments has been our digital mixer. You have to have a digital mixer. There are very inexpensive options out there. Our setup is the Midas MR18 and it allows us to have all our monitoring. We take care of all of that in our rehearsal. We save those settings and I back them up two or three different times and I keep on piggybacking so that each session gets better and better and better. Sometimes we're using a six line out to the board, sometimes we're using four inputs, sometimes we're using all 16 inputs, different configurations. Our vocal channel usually stays the same. When we record our rehearsal using that Midas, it allows us to listen back to it. We always print a two channel stereo mix and when we record it back, it allows us to really dissect what's going on. Does the vocal need a little bit of de around 8K? Is the kick drum too boomy in the fourth song? Are the tracks too low in the second song? It lacks energy. Is the guitar coming in with a, a chorus patch that shouldn't be there? You know, all these things are savable. Uh, you can really fine tune them. And that means your rehearsals are gonna get better incrementally, which means your stage show and your performance is gonna get better incrementally. Your ability to worry about performing and having an amazing time on stage is what you wanna do. That's what you're there for. People don't wanna watch you fumble around with ears that aren't working, a microphone that doesn't have a good connection, symbols that are falling off, you know, all these things interfere with how people perceive your performance. And if you've got them because you've done your homework and you saved your settings into your digital mixer and you've made those incremental moves and steps forward, you are gonna get better each time you use that mixer, each time you have a rehearsal, each time you put a little bit of time in, you're gonna get a whole bunch back. It saves so much time. Instead of using an analog mixer where you have to reset everyone's EQ and levels, this way it's just one touch of a button. It recalls their settings, so you have more time to rehearse your instrument and less time fiddling around trying to get the sound perfect and get up and running. Because sometimes if you're renting a rehearsal space or you only have a certain lot of time before someone has to go to work, you don't want to be spending the first hour of rehearsal doing technical. And sometimes technical can be such a buzzkill. So just recall those settings, be right back to where you were last time and get playing. I cannot say enough about it. It's been such a move forward for us. And I think it's going to be a really positive move forward for you. If you check out some of the links to the options below, there's some inexpensive options and there's also some great stuff like the MR18, the Midas. Run your set all the way through. You may be surprised to find that in the third song you get winded or that it gets kind of boring in the middle of the set and you need to interject some of the more hype songs in there. If you run your set all the way through, you can figure out flow and dynamic. Give yourself breaks if you need them. We like to do the tech rehearsal before we do the dress rehearsal so that we know that our system is a well-oiled machine. And when we move on to the more fun elements, like what are we gonna wear and all that stuff, it is more fun and we get to play. Run your entire set the whole way through. 
as many times as you can. This will allow you to figure out some of the issues that might come on stage and ruin your show. There might be sync issues, the click might be out because you made a little mistake where you started it with the, some of the tracks in Ableton or your, your sampler. Maybe you've updated your software, there's a driver issue or something. All this wonderful technology, there is a big responsibility in knowing it and how it works and reacts with each and every other piece. Sometimes a ground issue, sometimes a phase issue with some of your cables. You need to know that stuff before you're on stage so the sound techs aren't running around pulling their hair out going, why isn't this working? Everything's gotta be working. Just have a great show because you've rehearsed it and you've worked all the bugs out in your set at home. If you're uh, using stage monitors instead of in-ears, try to rent a stage monitor or go to a rehearsal space that has monitors to know what that feels like. Uh, that being said, you know, you can practice as much as you want but things are always gonna sound a little bit different on stage so that's why if you're as rehearsed as possible and as comfortable and in your zone as possible before you get there you won't let the nerves get the best of you you should always do a dress rehearsal in a dress rehearsal you should be wearing the in-ear monitors that you're gonna be using on stage try to buy a mic so that you can use the mic that you're gonna be using on stage in your rehearsal so you're comfortable with it wear what you're gonna wear at the show for a couple songs at least just to know that you're comfortable and nothing's falling apart and nothing's getting caught on anything. Do a dress rehearsal at least a few days before the show in case you have to add or replace something. Transcription is the cheapest and most available option for you to get better as a musician. Who are your idols? Watch them and borrow their secrets. Listen to how they're using their voices. Try to emulate them. It's not cheating, it's not stealing, it's learning. In fact, when I was in vocal jazz studying at college, I would have to transcribe Billie Holiday or Sarah Vaughan solos and performances to the note and have to sing them back in a test. It's ear training, it's learning, and it's a great way to get better. And when you practice other people's songs and other people's performances, it gets you out of your own little rut of only practicing what you know, and it will only stretch you and expand you and make you better. Get lessons if you need to. Is there a part in the song that you can't sing or a lick that you just can't nail? Go approach another professional. They'll take an objective opinion and approach to that problem and give you exercises to address it. It'll take the ego out of the equation so that you can just concentrate on the technical of it. So I always recommend getting lessons because really it's getting mentorship from people that know more about that specific thing than you. With the V-drum set up here, this is another step forward for us. Now being silent and not bleeding into the audience or Christina's ears, it really takes a lot of issues out of the game that way. I can basically show up to sound check. We are ready, line checked. The sound techs can just start putting us into the mix if we haven't had a time to do a sound check. And it already sounds great because we get to do our homework at home. A quick word on health. As a musician, it's your job to inspire and to bring joy and to entertain and bring light to people's lives. It can get really hard to do this if you're downtrodden with health issues or hangovers. Treat your body like a temple and a gift. Look, it used to be the rock star fable, of perishing at a young age, overdosing on the toilet, wasted, but there's nothing glamorous about that story, I promise you. Feed your body fresh, good food, exercise, if you're feeling too much anxiety from being in the limelight, take a social media break, go hang out with friends and family, go be in nature, go easy on the alcohol, don't smoke, it'll lessen the time you have here to share your gift with the world. I know it's a particularly hard occupation to do this in, but it's completely possible for you to be a happy, healthy, creative, productive musician. You got this. Thank you so much for watching this whole episode. I know it was a lot. I hope you take away some tips and tricks to practice for your next gig so that when you get on stage, you're there to play and you've already left those issues all behind and you get to shine for the universe. Future live musicians, let's go. From, From studio, studio to, to stage. stage.